cry of their leaders and say, if you build the platform for us to stand on, we will bring you freedom. They have to be discerning. And when you find a woman, one of the twenties who became a leading businesswoman, that's God. Yeah, yeah. That ain't no university. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's a spirit that enveloped her that made her believe she was as good and as smart and as astute as any other Bahamian man or woman. And that she could make herself into something special and in the process have her children and their children and their children's children become something special. History, particularly history in an island nation like the Bahamas, do not register the meaning and impact of the life of a woman like your mother now. That is why I understood why you decided to try and define for the record her existence as a citizen of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and as a mother and grandmother and great-grandmother and great-great. God graced her with a life and enabled her to live into her nights. God took a woman who got married at the age of 16 and had to prepare herself to be a mother and take on the responsibility of childbearing at 16. God enables her to live long enough, my Lord, let the record reflect. I ain't talking about the children. I ain't talking about the grandchildren. Eighty-two great-grandchildren. Then when I look down, fifty great-great. My Lord, my Lord. God can give you one. <laughs> to have the privilege, to have the privilege the grace of God to live and see the arms of your family extend itself to such an extraordinarily productive group of citizens of the Bahamas that have flowed from her. And for her to be consciously aware of all that she brought about. And to know that she has become an exemplar in this country, meaning one who by any definition can be seen to have set an example by the life she led and by her achievement. <coughs> and when one speaks about overcoming, we shall overcome, her life is a testimony. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That if you get hit down, you stand up and you're measured by the fact that you stand up. Yeah. She had to see children and grandchildren die before her. Sometimes in puzzling circumstances, and by puzzling I mean, oh Lord, why? And she had to bear all of that and hold the family together. There's a majesty in that. Good. And I've come simply to say that I knew her in her lifetime. I was able to see her leadership in her lifetime. I was able to express to her because she knew my relationship and respect for her children and my relationship with God. God granted her not only a long life, but an enriching life. Finally, to those of you who are from Andros, God has given me the privilege to leave the country at this point in our development. And my government has decided that the great promise of 
Andros, which has been spoken of by the leaders of Andros, including Dow, must now reach some level of fruition. My government has made a commitment in honor of all of the business persons who have struggled in this community and the other communities of Andros to bring new economies to Andros. And in the process of doing so, in this year alone, we'll probably commit 50, 60 million dollars in terms of the Agricultural and Marine Science Institute being built now, in terms of the linkages that we're going to establish, in terms of the roadways that will start imminently, and the infrastructure being put in, we are not going to compromise on it. And you are going to see large numbers of people from teaching institutions around the world continue to come in because we are insulating ourselves against any kind of challenge or failure by tying ourselves to leading academic institutions in Florida, in the Caribbean, and other places in the world. It is happening right now. And in a few weeks from now, I'm bringing in Stanford University at the behest of the Inter-American Development Bank. And I say this in honor of my role here. Because she was one of those pioneering women in this country and in this island. I end with this. That they're coming in to do a massive survey to set up the pathway to sustainable development businesses that will be established on this island. And so, in honor to a wonderful picture that speaks to the times in which they live, husband and wife, patriarch and patriarch, but in honor of both of them, to be able to say in this historic low town that it doesn't matter who says what, it is going to happen it's going to grow exponentially and it is going to bring a new level of comfort to the citizens of the Bahamas who live in this part of the Bahamas. I say that on this solemn occasion in tribute to a woman who was iconic in her contribution, defining in her relationships, and one who should be remembered for all that she represented. On behalf of the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, who I have the privilege to speak for at this stage in our Commonwealth, I would wish to salute her for all that she represented. And I shouldn't sit without saying, this woman was a princess of the church. Yes. And that obviously when I began by saying, it was God. Yes. It was God. Yes. And Donald, they tell me I shouldn't quote the Bible, some young politicians say that. The Bible. But I'll just tell you two things about, about life. Uh, I speak to a verse from the Bible because if I am to live as long as my mother, I only have nine years to live. There's a reality to that. And if I don't prepare myself for that, then I'm foolish. <laughs> a verse from the book of Psalm, I repeat on every occasion and before folks, I repeat it for me. And who won't hear it, could hear it. Yeah. But I said, it speaks about the finality of life. Yeah. As for a man, his days are as grass. This is yeah. from the book of Psalms. Yeah. As a flower in the field, he flourishes. Yeah. Yes. For the wind passes over and it is gone. Yeah. And the face thereof shall know it no more. But I want, I want to repeat one more. When my daddy died, no, no, and I, when my daddy died, I told my mommy and my brothers and sisters, I've spoken to him before his death, and I said, I'm trying to wrestle right now today 
but how I'm going to see my mummy again. This is young mummy I'm talking about now. And I know that I have to have faith to see her. I know that. And whatever my imperfections are, I know to have faith. I got to live a certain way. If I want to see her again. And the, the feeling of wanting to see her again, like you talk about your mummy and daddy together, I know that my days are numbered just as yours or yours. But this verse speaks to the most powerful verse that I could think of. And it speaks about faith. It comes from the book of Isaiah. And it says that when thou passest through the water, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they will not overflow. Even when I walk into the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you on fire. Now, logically, you know if you walk through fire. Or if you let the river flow over you, you can get drowned. But it is calling you to a level of faith. That's what it's doing for you. That if you want to see that money again, it says you got to have faith.